I'm going to show you how you can create this very flash looking Excel chart linked to a drop down box with one Excel formula, no code whatsoever. Let me show you how. Right, so what are we looking at here? It's a bit of a dashboard type scene, really. We've got a drop down here where we're picking our region. So let's say Atlantic, our chart updates, title updates, everything updates to show the sales and profit by month. How did I do that? Download this spreadsheet, completely free, no registration, no details asked for or anything like that, straight down onto your machine and you can work with it straight away and put your own data in it. But you probably want to look at the rest of the video because I'll show you how you can make it your own and style it the way you want it and link it to your own data. First things then, I have a data table. The key thing is that I've made it a table. Now the reason I've done that is to keep it dynamic so that any extra lines going on the bottom become part of the table too and will be included in your dynamic dashboard chart. It doesn't actually matter what your data is as long as you've got something that you can pick up as a chart and it's a sensible sort of data structure. The actual chart itself then, well it's a straightforward chart actually. When I click on it, I don't know if you can see here, it's highlighting the data it's picking up. So it's picking up sales and profit by month here. There's nothing really that special about the actual chart, although it's formatted in quite a flash way, and I'll show you how to do that in this video too. In, in these cells, we have a formula, and this is the only formula that you're going to need in this video, and that is the sum ifs formula. And this particular one, all it's doing is taking the sales data and summing it where the, the order month in the table matches the month above, and the order region matches E2. E2 is the cell underneath that drop down. And all I've done is I've linked this drop down so that when you change the drop down, it changes the cell underneath E2. And therefore, all of these numbers are linked with this sum ifs formula, and that changes the chart. So that in a nutshell is what we're going to do from scratch right now. We need a few elements of structure. So I'm just going to copy and paste at the moment all of this. So I'm going to put it into D4 there. And I'm just going to paste it as values. So I'm going to delete out those numbers there. Right align this stuff here. And I'll make that bold. I'll make all these bold too. Get rid of this for the moment. Right, so we've got our data table structure here. Now, what I didn't show you earlier was there's a hidden row in here, and this is the list that's going to drive that drop down box. So, if I wanted to take my regions, I take the whole lot, so control shift arrow down, copied it on a new book, right click, paste special, and then on this data tab, remove duplicates. Just hit OK. And that got me that list instantly. Now, you could do that for anything in, in a big data table. So go back to example here, copy it over here and call it region. And then I'll also put the word region here because we're going to have our drop down box selector here. Go to the developer tab, but just in case you don't have the developer tab, click on customize the quick access toolbar, more commands, customize ribbon. There it is. Tick that box developer. And we're going to use an active X combo box. And the only reason I'm using an active X combo box as opposed to, say, a form control combo box is that the active X combo box outputs the actual value, or you can get it to output the actual value that you've selected into a cell. And it has the added bonus, sorry, of looking quite professional. So it could, a data validation list would also output to the same cell but it doesn't look as professional and you could end up, you know, you're going to have to merge cells and things like that. ActiveX combo box, if I hold down Alt, can have it sort of sized like that, can float on top of those cells, definitely looks like a drop down selector and I can get it to output to E2. Just going to change a few properties on that. So you could click on properties there or you could just right click and do properties. A couple of important things. First thing, the style change to a list. 
because uh, a combo would let people type in it and we don't want that. Special effect, because we're using it on a worksheet, I like to do flat because it gives more room for the text that gets chosen. It never quite fits the same size text as the row height. So what I like to do is just knock down one off the font scale because otherwise you'll see it sort of cuts the bottom of things like the letter Y off. And then also the border style, I'm going to put a border around it. Actually, I might make that black while I'm at it. Our link cell, I said, was going to be E2. So that's where it's going to output our region name. And our list fill range is going to be this list, this on here. And wish you could just highlight that. You can't. Uh, I'm going to put this to B3 to B9. Right, so we've got it linked. We've got it looking good. Let's just have a look. You've got to take it off design mode to test this stuff. Close that. Yeah, appears to be linking to that list. Go over that cell. You can see the contents of that cell there are matching the drop down box. So it's good to go. Right, our chart title then. I'm going to merge the region and a title and then link to this. So I'm just going to call this uh, sales and profit by month for put a space and merge that with E2. So there you see, now our chart title will change as we change this. So I'm going to use the sum ifs formula. So our sum range is going to be on our data table, the sales. So if we go to the first line of sales or even the header if you want, but first line of sales and hit control shift down, you'll see our formula picked up that we want all the sales in this table called orders. So that's another great reason to make your data a table. Right, our criteria range for the first thing I'm going to check for, because it's nice and simple, is the month. Same thing, control shift and down, pick up the month. I only want to pick up data where the month is equal to the month above. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to hit F4 to fix various parts of the range. Now what I want to fix is only the row. So I always want it to be on row 5 so when I copy this data along it goes, picks up the various months. And I'm also going to get rid of the sheet name example because you don't need it. It's just kind of annoying if you want to uh, copy and paste these formulas to other sheets, it's still then referring back to the old sheet. That will pick up the total sales for the month of January, the formula as it stands at the moment, if I was just to hit enter. But we want to also check for the region that we've picked on our drop down. So go back to our data, go back to the region. I'll do exactly the same thing. So it comes up as the region there. And then what's our criteria here? Well, it's whatever's in the cell E2, the output of our drop down box. Hit F4 once to fix that, because wherever we copy and paste this formula, the region's still in the same place. Remove the sheet name for the same reason, personal preference. Close the parentheses, hit enter. In fact, if I copy this across now, uh, and you can do Control R actually as a shortcut on that. There's some fairly big numbers in there. So what I've done on my chart is I've divided them by a thousand because that will just give me some smaller numbers on the chart and you can say that the sales are in thousands then. Now number format's not great either. So I'm going to hit Control Shift 1, which is going to make it into a number. Going to knock a couple of decimal places out. All right, so that's our sales formula. Profit formula, well, the great thing about tables is that if I change that word to profit, as long as my column's called profit, in fact, you could tell it is because it's given me that suggestion, hit enter, and then I can copy that across as well. We now have our complete sort of uh, sales and profit data, and this should now be changing as my region changes. Now, if I highlight that area there and do Alt F1, that will put an instant chart on my spreadsheet. And I'm clicking Alt, which 
as I move it and that locks it to cell boundaries. Now what I did before is first off I had quick formats and I wanted one with data labels so I picked this one because it's already got data labels it just saves me adding them and then in terms of design I quite liked the look of this one. Uh, colour schemes I liked the look of that and then change the chart type to a column I like the look of that chart title I just click on it and hit equals and where my where I put my chart title incidentally if you try and put that formula straight into the chart title it doesn't like it but it doesn't mind you linking directly to a cell that has that formula in we've got data labels so I can get rid of that axes there this or move up here and I actually think as well that these can be a bit bigger so I'm just going to whack that up a bit and that, that one we can move up to about 18 in fact that can probably go much bigger now this axis is here is getting caught up with these negative numbers so we want to do something about this format axes now if you couldn't get to that you can always go into the design here and you can pick it directly from this drop down list key thing is the labels Scroll down, instead of saying next to axes, we want them to say low. And I deliberately did that before I expanded the chart because now they're low, they're kind of falling outside of the chart area. But actually this whole chart I think can be a bit bigger really. It's gonna make that bold and hit Control B on that. These data series here, again, I think we can go with about say 10% and a 25% gap. Sorry, minus 10, I reckon there. Don't want it overlapping, do we? That looks pretty decent, I reckon. So on the view menu, I took off the grid lines. Here, I hid those two columns. Now I hid them with a expander, which would be Alt Shift and the right arrow, or left will take it away again. And then you can expand and collapse that if you like. I had, take this off, this looking a bit flash. Did I spend ages formatting that? No, not at all. What did I do? Well, I highlighted it, and then on the home men menu, I clicked format as a table, and I picked this one just because it was similar to the chart. My table has headers, yes it does, okay. And then, as soon as I'd done that, I don't really want it as a table, so I just said convert it back to a range, and that gave me that formatting there. And then all I did was copy using the Format Painter to there and to there. Put a box around the whole thing, put a smaller box around that. Quick bonus tip though, I think if you're being really flash and you do want to release it as a dashboard I think if you knock out the formula bar and the headers as well and then you can even collapse that I mean you're now looking at something that probably doesn't look much like Excel at all great little dashboard for people to play around and look at perhaps their own regions sales if they're some kind of regional manager hope you enjoyed that the whole spreadsheet, free to download, work along to this video as many times as you like, do whatever you like, put your own data and charts, links in there. Hope you have fun with it, and I'll see you soon.